Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Leah and I make videos on all different types of DIY projects. My biggest thing right now is beeswax candle making and because of that, I figured it would be fun to do a inventory video today. Today, I'm going to show you the inventory that I typically have on hand for candle making. As you can see behind me, it is quite a bit. If you watched my last video that I posted, which will be linked at the end of this video, you'll know that I lost my candle making blog recently. That website did have all of my inventory, all of my Amazon links and all of that in it. And since that is no longer around, I'm going to be listing all of my Amazon links for all of this stuff in case you guys want any of it. It's going to be in the description box below. And this is the same supplies that I use in all of my videos. So if there's ever anything that you're wondering about in any of my other videos, like what types of wicks I use, what types of containers, all of that is stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys today. So if you have any questions, also feel free to comment something below. First things first, these are the wax melt containers that I use. They're called clamshells. These are some wax melts that I have left over from the year. Just a couple different ones, but these are what I make them in. This is the brand and I will link the Amazon link for it, but they come like stacked like this. So there is a lot in here. It's usually a really good deal to get these on Amazon. I think I paid like $8 for, you know, this looks like it was probably like 50 or 100 or something like that. So this is a good deal and I will link this below. This is about how many I have left over at the end of the year. Didn't make nearly as many clamshells as I did last year, but that's okay. These are pretty cute. They are Otis Classic Honey Pot glass containers. So these I actually got from my mother-in-law a while back and I have just not used very many of them yet, even though they're adorable. Like, this is what they, let me take it out of here. This is what they look like. How cute is that? I've made one or two candles with it, but not nearly as many as I want to. Maybe next year's project is going to be filling up these little honey pots with something. They all honestly look like you could put Epsom salts in them and give them out as gifts maybe. So maybe some scented Epsom salts for next year. This one is slightly embarrassing. <laughs> these are kind of sort of failed candle projects that I have just kept around. Some of them aren't really failed, they're just... I think this one was for a can you fix a... Um, Oh, what is this? What is this? A tunneled candle. So this is tunneling where there's still wax left around the outside. And obviously this one did not work because the wick is so small. So for something like this, I am just going to put it on my coffee maker and melt the wax down until it's like in a pool and then just probably put a new wick in it once I can take that one out. But a lot of these are kind of like that. So it's like stuff when you're candle making you will have a lot of failed experiments this one did not work because it really needed three wicks i put two in it and it just it did not burn well enough and i loved it like the bowl is super cute i got that from world market and it just we're gonna try again this is the one that i did that honey pot in and glass is tricky you guys if you've ever made candles in glass before it just does not always work out the way you want it to. And this got a huge sinkhole in it. So we're going to have to try to figure out how to fix that. This one is my glass containers, like the tall ones. And these I will list on Amazon in the description box below. I really do love these. Oh, I did not realize I still had one of these left. Hmm, that is, that is probably going to get burnt tonight. So... These have these cute bamboo lids and they're little glass containers. I believe they're 16 ounces and the tops, like, they're really snug. They're really nice. I like them a lot. So I would, I would highly recommend these from using them myself. They're super cute and they're, they make really good gifts. And, like, you can see how nice this one looks. I haven't cut the, uh, the wick on that one, but... Just super cute. Really, really nice candle jars. Also, I did I did go ahead and light this candle. It is too cute. It is my Sage Wisdom candle. I believe it is clary sage, lemon, and cedarwood. And it's just the best. 
This is the beeswax I am currently using. I'm gonna list it. I am, I can't tell if I'm a fan yet. I, the last couple candles that I've made with it had this kind of weird crinkly look, I don't know, kind of like a wrinkly look at the top. And I'm thinking it's because I poured them too hot, but I can't tell if I like this beeswax yet. It is, I don't know, it looks like my other beeswax that I had gotten before, but this is a new one. So you can see it looks like the regular white beeswax pellets. So it's probably fine. It, they were out on Amazon of the one that I usually get, so this is the one I got last time, but I don't know. It didn't, the tops didn't turn out like I wanted them to, but it is organic and that is the important thing to me right now. Well, it's maybe not organic because it's a hundred percent natural beeswax on the front. So I, I want to always make my candles as natural as possible. I want all the good negative ions in my candles. That's why I use beeswax other than it just lasting longer. So I don't know. I will list this one below. I'll also list the one that I typically use. These are probably one of my favorite candle things that I've ever bought. I love the hearts and crafts tins they are just so cute and they work really well and i'm going to show you a couple of the ones that i have left from this year so let's see well it looks like i only have green ones left so usually this one is green gold and red um let me see actually i think i have a couple just laying around here so this is the gold one this is the green one, and let me see. This is what the red one looks like. It does have one of my labels on top of it. Look at that, how cute. I do make these labels myself. I have a video showing how to make candle labels. These are from uh, Sticker App, and Sticker App is great for doing like any kind of stickers. I use them for other kinds of stickers as well, but I've noticed that la my labels turn out so well when I use sticker app for my labels. Not sponsored. But this is the Christmas set from Hearts and Crafts. So most of my stuff I do keep in these two plastic containers. They're not very big, but they're the ones, uh, I got them from Target. So you can get these, I like the ones that have the clamp on the sides, like uh, the ones that like are really sturdy because I have a four year old son and at one point these were uh, not super accessible, but I didn't want him to be able to ever get into them. And he could now, but like when he was smaller, I definitely didn't want him getting in them. So these are really nice and I'm going to show you guys kind of what I have in here. It's not super organized, but it, I do my best. Just thought of something else that I typically will always use. For candle making, I do have this set from World Market. It is a candle wick snuffer, wick trimmers, and a wick dipper. So if you're making candles or just even using them and buying them, you should be using a set like this. It is best for keeping the soot out of your candle to always snuff it instead of blowing it out. It also keeps wax from going everywhere or you know potentially stuff catching on fire. I would never go back to just blowing out candles. I always use a uh, candle wick snuffer. Um, if you're making candles, you need to have a good set of wick trimmers. Um, it's better than using scissors, especially because with this, you can get all the way into the bottom of the candle. And if you're using candles, you need to be trimming it between uh, uses so that the wick is not too tall because if it's too tall, the wick can, uh, the flame can get too big and could get out of control. And uh, it's just good to keep it at about an eighth of an inch, I believe. Might be a fourth of an inch, but always look that up. And then this, I don't use a ton except for I use it to get the uh, the candle topper off when the candle is hot. If I want to, well, when I blow it out. But you can also use it for dipping the wick into the wax, like the melted pool of the wax, and putting it out that way. Which I don't typically do, but you can do it. That is everything that I typically use for making candles. All Amazon links will be listed in the description box below.
Thank you again for being here and for watching my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!